All right, so there we go. Uh, welcome everyone. Welcome back to Pan-African Kitchen Lab uh, with our host, Creative in, El Creative in Residence, Nadine Nelson. And let's see, who do you, who is your guest again? Tiffany Benbo. Thank you for joining us, Tiffany. And Nadine is going to be uh, guiding us through creating res recipes from the African diaspora. So can you tell us more about what you're doing? Yeah, so today we are doing food from the Afro-Caribbean, and both Tiffany and I are Jamaican. However, we're, we're not going to make it um, Jamaican-focused because, you know, the Caribbean has many places that um, colonize those islands, and it's like kind of weird to look at things through colonization, but um that's how we can divide things up and so next week we'll be looking at the afro latino so we won't be looking at you know cuba puerto rico and um you know part of like the mexico or like panama or you know parts of latin america guyana Suriname are part of the caribbean and part of caricom you know so we're not going to be looking at the latino parts we're going to be looking at the English Caribbean, and we'll be looking, I'll be talking a little bit about the French Caribbean. And if people have any questions about the Dutch Caribbean, you can ask those questions. I've been to St. Martin and um, I've been to like around seven to nine islands. So, you know, a lot of people feel like the islands are all the same. They definitely are not the same. They have all different types of flavor to them. You know, Jamaica, a lot of people, um, describe it as the closest thing to Africa outside of the continent and being probably most specifically West Africa where you know most Jamaicans um, probably are derived from. Um, so however, we are making a bunch of different things today and they're actually um, from the English Caribbean. However, they are from other islands or like we'll, um, I'm gonna play some videos. I'm gonna do the first part, as I said, like at the slideshow to give people context because we have things that are cooking inside the oven. If people did not see before, we have eggplant choka. And eggplant choka is a um, Indian derived dish. And so um, the Southeast Asians, Indians came to the Caribbean, most of them, like if they've been there for a long time, um, came as indentured servants. So after, you know, um, emancipation, they came to work on the plantations, both Chinese, Indian, and German. And I don't know if it's debatable if they were Irish, but I know that in Jamaica, for instance, there were German indentured servants, and there's parts of Jamaica where you could see that influence in both the coloring and also kind of some of the food preservation and stuff like that. So we're making eggplant choka, which is um, roasted eggplant, onions, tomatoes that's kind of mixed up, and it's like kind of like a dip that you have with naan. Um, we're making curry vegetables and chickpeas. We'll dis discuss curry um, a little bit later because curry is like, you know, something with a sauce and it's not actually not Indian. And so we'll talk a little bit about that. And I made a quick video about that. We're gonna make a Caribbean chopped salad with like a dressing, um, Caribbean style um, fried rice. And it's actually not barley. It's like half brown rice and half um, bulgur. Um, I didn't have enough time to do the, you have to, you have to cook the barley and then have it be cold when you make fried rice, you know? And so I didn't have time to do that. So I had rice and um, bulgur that was all already there. And that's a really great mix for those people who have like diabetes or, you know, like they have to wash their carbs to be able to have a high fiber kind of thing. And then we're making jerk cabbage. All right, so um, those things, um, Tiffany right now is, cutting up stuff for our curry and our stir fry and the salad. The eggplant choka is in the oven at 450 and so is the jerk cabbage. The jerk cabbage, I cut it in eighths and then I mixed one tablespoon of, where's the jerk seasoning? Oh, right here. I mix it with one 
um, heaping teaspoon of jerk seasoning. This is Walker's wood. There's all different types. This is a wet jerk seasoning and there's grace and there's bush of browns. There's all different types. And the reason why I'm mentioning them is because I have you no know, preference. I buy all of them because they're all different. Some of them have high salt. Some of them don't have any salt whatsoever. Some of them have more allspice. Some of them don't. So it's like, um, I mix it with a little bit of olive oil, two tablespoons of olive oil, one heaping teaspoon of jerk, a sprinkle of dried jerk seasoning on the cabbage wedges. And then I just smeared the jerk, the paste with the oil on the cabbage wedges and they're, they're cooking right now. All right, so can we do share screen, um, Rose, so I can start the, um, the presentation, please? Yep, you should be able to share your screen. There's a, like a toolbar at the bottom. Yep. Um, it says only, um, so can I put, okay. is the screen sharing now? Yep. All right. All right, so I'm just gonna play this video. This is like, a, um, and then I'll do the presentation afterwards. Um, this is just on curry. And so I did this on, on curry. Can you hear or? Nope, we can't hear that yet. All right, so. I wonder why you can't hear. When you share the share the screen, I think there's a checkbox somewhere to share audio as well. So make sure that was checked off. All right. Um, pause share. Mm -hmm. Share sound. Mm -hmm. Okay. Are you hearing it now or no? Oh, there's nothing playing. So play it and we'll see if the sound turns on. Okay, it's supposed to be playing. Uh, it seems to be paused. It's playing now. Hmm, maybe it's frozen? I've got ah, of there a we go. tomato that I just diced up. Yep. The whole idea here now is to bring that back up to a right, boil. Right. I'm going to start it from the beginning. Right. My little terra hawks, my daughters, they like it a little bit more spicy. So in goes a bit more of that scotch on the pepper. Bring that up to a boil. And as it comes up to a boil, kind of work the edge around to get all the color into the chicken. As it starts coming up to a boil, it's gonna move that around. And heat is still on medium high there. And as you see, as I move the chicken pieces around and the liquid starts getting in contact with the sort of, it's not burnt, it's just, darker areas of the pan. It's gonna really get that gravy to the color that we're looking for. Final ingredient to go in there. Just want to go in there. Going for an Indian or having a so curry is almost as stereotypically British as roast dinners or fish and chips. There are around 12,000 curry houses in Britain. The word came from the Tamil curry, which meant a spiced sauce, but gradually the term was adapted and used as a generic term for any stew-like food from the Indian subcontinent. Rather ignoring such subtleties as regional differences and completely different flavors, textures, cooking methods, and ingredients. All right, so the first definite mention of curry in English. Guys, listen to it on your own. Unfortunately, and so there you go, still friends. What you need to going. do here is personalize two so ways. I need some gravy because I oh, really okay. Just wait. Sorry. Okay, now there's nothing playing. Oh, that okay. Oh, damn. <laughs> I wanted to play that. Can we see if we can? Um, well, you know what? Let me just go inside here and see if we can, if you can see my.
All right, I'm gonna change. I'm gonna um, flip this cabbage because I smell it. I'm actually not going to flip it. <laughs> <laughs> but do you, see, you guys see the seasoning on there? Uh, kind of. The paste? It's a little hard to see when you've got screen share because the overhead camera is just a tiny box in the corner. Oh. So I'm just feeling the cabbage. And so next time I'll do a better job of making sure the ace are all the same because these smaller ones are almost done and these bigger ones are not. Mm -hmm. So. These are a little smaller. Yeah. Look like cut them up and um and um oops. Hopefully this will work. All right, can you guys see and hear me? Yep. yep. All right, good. All right, so here's the Caribbean, as I said. Ooh. All right, and so you see like there's parts of Mexico, Belize, Honduras, Nicaragua, Panama, Colombia, Venezuela, Guyana, Suriname is down here. That is all part, you know, like they all face the Caribbean Sea and they all have a Caribbean influence. If people don't understand that also there was, you know, the forced migration of slaves, but then also at different times, um, like my grandfather, came to America during World War II um, to work in the factories. During the Panama Canal, he went to Panama also, but then also other people went to Panama and other places in the Caribbean during World War I and World War II. And so like in Costa Rica, and um, I'll say that Costa Rica, that, that there's people who are there that are African derived, that they're from Jamaica, for instance, and they have the ackee and salt fish and keep up those traditions that are not necessarily Afro-Latino. And so you have a lot of influence. Um, if you look at, well, next week we'll talk about mole in Mexico and mole where you have mole um, in Oaxaca and um, Tiffany will be able to talk about that because she's lived there. Um, you'll see people, the Afro-Mexicans. Um, and so you have the, the West Indies and, and depending on, you know, like how you're raised just depends on if you call yourself West Indian or you call yourself Caribbean. And so there are people who are older, they would call themselves West Indian because they hail to the queen and they're more colonial. People who are younger, like myself, I wouldn't call myself West Indian, call myself Caribbean or Jamaican or Jamaican American. I don't connect myself to the queen. Um, so I just want to acknowledge that. There are some people that, you know, like when you look at Caribbean culture, a lot of people are like, oh, well, Jamaicans don't like Bayesians or Trinidadians and all that kind of stuff. And there can be that stuff, but I think that, um, I would hope that many of us understand that we all come from the same place and we just ended up in different um, different islands. But a lot of our culture is very similar um, as it is not the same. So these are the exports and things that, you know, um, 
the Caribbean is known for right now? Because I think that I just wanted to bring in that, like, as you look at COVID and, you know, the things that happened with um, hurricanes and food insecurity, a lot of food is not grown in the Caribbean anymore. And so that's something to be looked at. But these are things that are crops that are grown in different parts. And so we'll talk about spice as it applies to like spice mixes and stuff like that and jerk. But, you know, there's coffee, cocoa, which is the pure form of chocolate, cotton, root crops, pineapple, bananas. Here are some of the different dishes from different aspects of the Caribbean. So you have kunk salad in the um, Bahamas. You have um, Jamaican, you have jerk. Story of jerk I'll talk about a little bit later. Aki and saltfish, patties, Haitian culture. Grio is a fried pork, it's spicy. You have rice and beans. You have a lot of stewed codfish. This is Grenada. It's like fungi and pepper pot. That's like callaloo and okra. Fungi is cornmeal in different places in the Caribbean. They might call it turn cornmeal. Here it's called grits. But we have our own version of cuckoo, fungi. Oil down is coconut simmered stew. It can be, usually it has no meat in there. Here's callaloo. Desayena is um, cheese wrapped in it's from the Dutch Caribbean um, and pastry. So I just want to go a little bit over like the way that I believe in cooking, since we we'll probably have a little bit more time today, is that I believe that engaging people, I believe in showing people improvisation so you don't depend on me or recipes that you can use what we're teaching to create something for yourself. We believe that everyone can, contains knowledge about food, um, that there's a greater connection to food when we talk about those connections and talk about symbiosis. Um, we believe that young people um, can lead in talking about food and food sovereignty and food justice. We believe that food changes the world, especially when we talk about it, um, especially for food equity and food sovereignty. We believe in the power of being authentic and feeling free to share about your culture and your love of your food, to be inclusive and diverse and to celebrate and most of all, have fun. This comes from an organization called Fest out on the West Coast in Seattle. And some of these slides are the same because I don't know who's here or who's not. So, um, but I like Mark Hyman and how he promotes cooking and thinking about um, food, not from a convenience point of view um, and making sure our food is not processed. So I think this cabbage is done for right now. I've been testing out this jerk cabbage recipe. I've been doing it with like purple cabbage. I wanna do it on the grill, um, do it a couple different ways because there's not any recipes online and that's what I'm going for. It's a really good way. I don't know if like people do whole roasted cabbage or whole roasted um, cauliflower, but jerk is like really strong flavor. So jerk comes from where I come from in Jamaica, which is Port Antonio and Boston um, Bay. That's where specifically where it comes from. And the Maroons, which are escaped, um, um, enslaved, they fought the British and were able, they were so strong that the British signed a treaty and said that you could just go stay up in the hills. So there's like two encampments in Jamaica and they would escape and then they would, you know, they learned these barbecuing techniques. Like um, it's debatable whether it was like, you know, the Tayanos or the Arawak Indians, um, Africans and mixing those spices together, which is like allspice, thyme, um, cinnamon, nutmeg, 
um, hot pepper, scotch bonnet peppers, all of those things are put into a paste with like onion, garlic, and it all depends on where you're from, what your jerk recipe is, but they would poke holes in, um, in wild pigs and then cook them and then have them um, cover them so the smoke would not be escaped so the British would not be able to find them. And so um, it's what Jamaica is known for and um, a really great way to cook because there's not a lot of fat in the seasoning and you can use it on a lot of different things, not only meat. So. All right, so these are slides that we had before, just, you know, acknowledging, you know, being connected to our past, like being connected to slave um, trade, understanding how even though black people were dropped off in different places that we, we changed a lot of our um, historical um, food practices and they're connected even if we're not um, from the same places. So all these things like how we eat um, contribute to how we live. And, you know, like for me, a lot of this has to do with health and connecting people to the food of their culture. I grew up seven day Adventist and I grew up around a lot of people who are vegan and vegetarian and definitely look to foods to for longevity and eating longer. Um, and so I bring that to my practice and empowering people to look at their culture, whatever it is, to be able to find solutions um, for living a better life and also e eating healthier. And we do these in many different places. All right, so I'm gonna try and hopefully this will show like the history of the Caribbean food in five minutes. Take a look at these dishes. Whether you live in the Caribbean, Here? or visited the region, or simply been yep, to a restaurant serving Caribbean cuisine, you've probably tasted one or more of these dishes. Many of them and the culture that they represent have been popularized the world over. Here's a Caribbean fusion restaurant in Canada. Here's one of many in the United States. Here's one in Germany. Here's one even in Hong Kong. This style of cuisine has become synonymous with the laid back, fun in the sun lifestyle of the Caribbean. But it wasn't always so. In fact, some of the ingredients in the very food we eat today have a much darker history to them than what meets the eye. What you'll find out is that this is what you get from cultures from all over the world over a span of centuries of adding their own ingredients into the pot, making what we call today Caribbean cuisine. Imagine the Caribbean as an empty clay pot for now. Watch and see how different cultures start to add to that pot. When you look at many of the fruits that have been most synonymous with the Caribbean, such as breadfruit, mangoes, and sugarcane, we automatically think these fruits originated from the Caribbean, right? But the truth is, they're not. You have the European settlers to thank for that, as the Spanish, French, and English introduced many of these fruits and ingredients from other places. So the next question you might be asking, if breadfruit, mangoes, and sugarcane aren't Caribbean in origin, then what is? That would be the yams, papayas, guavas, and cassava scattered around the archipelago. This was the diet of the first true settlers of the Caribbean, the Carib, Arawak, and Taino tribes that came from South and Central America. And when it comes to the seasoning of meats and fish, the Caribs introduced various spices to their recipes. After the Amerindians and Europeans' contribution to this pot came the Africans through the Atlantic slave trade, and this is where things started to get a little dark with regards to food. You see, for the Africans, blending different unfamiliar ingredients into their recipes wasn't a matter of delicacy. It was often essential to their survival. A slave's diet in those days mostly consisted of the foods that their slave masters didn't want to eat themselves, so they had to get creative. They blended their traditional African foods with the staple foods they found on the islands, introducing things such as okra, kalaloo, saltfish, and ake into the mix. You could say that they were the ones who actually started to stir this Caribbean pot of foods together, making it closer to the familiar recipes we see today. Next would be the Chinese and Indian indentured laborers who would come and introduce such ingredients as rice and curry, and sailors who moved back and forth through the Americas to a lesser extent 
brought in the ingredients they got there as well, like corn, beans, potatoes, and tomatoes, making the pot of Caribbean cuisine we know and love today. You might wonder, if each island developed their cuisine individually, how did they all develop generally the same Caribbean fusion taste? Well, actually, they kind of didn't and did at the same time. As each island developed their own cuisine, they ended up with some very unique dishes, almost exclusive to their respective islands, and in some cases becoming that island's national dish, such as ackee and saltfish in Jamaica and green fig and saltfish in St. Lucia. But there are also some dishes, as a result of many of the same ingredients being accessible in each island, recipes such as cook-up or pelau, as it's called in some parts, became common throughout the region. And we can't talk about Caribbean food without mentioning the seasoning. Seasoning, which in the Caribbean is a green herb and oil-based marinade, is actually quintessential to its flavor and is used in just about every island in the region, as a result giving this part of the world its distinct character. One thing is for certain, Caribbean cuisine is a clear example of what can happen when a region becomes one of the crossroads of the world. Had the Atlantic trade winds not been there to carry the many different cultures from around the world through this region, we wouldn't have this amazing amalgamation of cultures to celebrate today. In fact, Caribbean cuisine actually stands as a testament to the diversity of the region that we celebrate. When we eat our favorite local dish as Caribbean people, we're eating what represents a mirror of who we are. Not as Amerindians or Europeans or Africans or even Asians, but as Caribbean people, a melting pot of cultures. Take a look at these dishes. Whether you live in the Caribbean, or visited the region, or simply been to a restaurant. So, an important permaculture principle and considers problems to be opportunities and that if we reframe our approach, we can perceive every problem as an opportunity for improvement. And so, that's why I teach these classes because oftentimes I'm called in by health plans to work with populations that they're saying they're hard, having a hard time reaching and it's because they're not speaking their language or talking about foods that they eat. And so, it's important to connect people to their culture because you know I know growing up Jamaican I don't think I would feel as connected to my culture if my mom did not cook food for my culture like every week and so like I grew up like what is typical for Jamaican Jamaican American households is on Saturdays you have soup day on Sunday you have rice and peas um, and you have Sunday dinner and you sit down with your family you know, you might cook together, um, having picnics all together, um, especially like in the summertime, um, growing your own food. Um, but food is really important to, I would say, most Caribbean households. Um, and I would say that within my Caribbean household, um, I'm Jamaican American, but my stepfather, I stepfather who was from Nevis and St. Kitts, I one that was from from Trinidad and Tobago, I have stepsister that step, um, yeah, stepsister that is um, Puerto Rican and Dominican and Haitian. I grew up around a whole bunch of Toronto. Um, is the black people that are there for the most part are from either from the continent or from the Caribbean. And so, I've always grown up around a whole bunch of. Caribbean people. My mom's best friend is from St. Lucia. So I have all different types of food because um, I am, enjoy all different types of food. So like a curry, Jamaican curry is different than a Trinidadian curry, but then even in a Jamaican household, a curry can be different. I was just saying to um, Tiffany, you know, like, do you put tomato in your curry? And most Caribbean people would not put tomato in their curry, you know? And I mean, even like, I put a lot of vegetables in my curry and some people only will put, you know, carrots and peppers and, you know, um, they might put some sweet potato or something like that. I, I usually put a lot of vegetables in my curry and we're going to do it um, based on a bean curry. So we're going to do it with um, chana or, or chickpeas. And in Trinidad, that's what they call, or in, you know, 
in places that they have a large Indian uh, population, they call um, chickpeas chana. And so a Trinidadian curry where it's like 40 to 60% people of Indian descent is going to have more Indian flavor and less, I would say Caribbean curries have more um, cinnamon or allspice or nutmeg, like spices that are um, central and part of the Caribbean and are, are dominant, like ginger and stuff like that. So it's gonna be more, I tell people, Caribbean curries are more fragrant. And I'll show you in a second. Um, we have a bunch of different spices like Jamaican curry. We have curry from Trinidad, the different brands. And, you know, and I cook with all of them because they all have a different flavor. So one curry is not the same. You know, one jerk seasoning is not the same. All right, so we talked a little bit last week about decolonization of food and, you know, feeling connected to your food um, and where your food comes from. Understanding that a lot of culture is not what is visible, but what is invisible. So when you're trying to service people, you need to be able to connect with them with, with things that are important. Um, looking at the foods that are people from the Caribbean um, eat, you know, they're, you know, they're islands. So like, you know, obviously they're going to be fish and stuff like that. But then, you know, um, people, they grew sugarcane and, and cotton, but then, you know, pineapples, tomatoes, onions, cabbage, all that kind of stuff that it's a very agrarian culture also. And then now there is a sense of trying to get people to go back to growing food because like people like my cousins, um, who are younger, they don't grow food. And it's kind of interesting because food is very expensive in the Caribbean. Inflation in regard to food is a lot and they import a lot of food. And so it's amazing to me that people will prefer to pay for a tomato from Canada than to be able to grow them sometimes. But the cultures that we were raised in, you know, like when I go to Jamaica, my, grand, my uncle has a farm except for oil, if they haven't made coconut oil at the time, which they, you know, the coconuts are on our land. For the most part, the only things that is bought is like oil or rice and everything else we, we, we grow. Like we have bananas, green bananas, wheat green bananas, or, you know, green plantains or um, cocoa or malanga. These are different these are different root vegetables or cassava, say them in English like cassava or um, dasheen, things like that. These are all root vegetables, pumpkin. We grow those things, okra, we grow those things. So here is the, um, the Afro-Caribbean diet. So the West Indies and Caribbean islands bring tropical accents and various seafood to African heritage diet pyramid. Approximately 23 million people of African descent live in the Caribbean. Here we find French, African and Spanish and Dutch um, culinary influences. Surrounded by ocean, traditional African Caribbean fare included a variety of seafood like salt fish and kunk, tropical fruits, like papaya and guava, rice and peas, dishes typically featuring pigeon peas or red beans or black beans, um, like papaya and guava. Okay, coconut milk, breadfruit, callaloo, yams, plantains, anato, and pumpkins are all found in the Caribbean islands. In the southern parts of the Caribbean, roti is popular flatbread primarily made from whole wheat flour that can be filled with curry vegetables, shrimp, or bean dishes, chana. All right, so in the pantry, you have canned, a lot of canned ingredients because, you know, obviously it's the Caribbean and, and you have hurricanes. And so you might grow your food, but then you might can your food or you have a lot of things that you buy out of cans, like canned fish, like sardines and you make sardine fritters or corned beef. And so you call it bully beef and you might cook it with cabbage, um, mackerel, stuff like that. You have coconut milk, cornmeal, dried beans, pigeon beans, black beans, kidney beans, um, salted cod, different salted fish like herring, um, marlin, stuff like that. You have rice, vinegar, spices, allspice, bay leaf, cumin, curry, jerk, oregano, thyme, vanilla, soy sauce. Um, you have all these different kind of fresh ingredients. 
And then some of the healthy dishes that you can make, curry chickpeas and vegetables, curry or grilled roasted vegetables, eggplant choca. You can make choca out of all different things. Galapinto, Jamaican cook up rice and cabbage and pumpkin, jerk chicken, rice and beans, shrimp and vegetable, lo mein, stuffed fish and pumpkin, stuffed chayote, which is uh, squash, callaloo, corn soup. So I just show these maps. So like when I deal with, when a client calls me, asks me, I look at different maps and say like, they want me to come up with different recipes. And I'm like, well, if I'm going to be dealing with a Latino neighborhood or a Caribbean neighborhood, then I'm going to do something like a jerk cabbage. Or I'm going to think about what can someone buy in that neighborhood. Um, and then when I come up with recipes, because, you know, we didn't really talk about the recipe making process that much. Um, is that when you write a recipe, you write down all the ingredients in the order that you use them in the recipe. But then also when I think about what are great recipes to be able to do are things that people already have, things that people can buy in their neighborhood easily, um, things that people like, you know? Um, and so like, you know, what do you look into your fridge? You know, people who have Caribbean descent are always gonna have rice and beans. They're gonna have some, be able to make something out of a curry, out of something. You can make a curry out of tofu and onions and carrots and, you know, five ingredients, you know, like you don't need a lot of things to make a curry, you know? So that's why one of the reasons why I'm doing a recipe for an easy, how do you do an easy curry? Um, what kind of te cooking technique are you do? We're going to be doing a stir fry. That's a, a cooking technique. You know, what kind of flavor combo for the cabbage? We're doing jerk, you know, like, so thinking about that. And then what do you want to pair your food with? Thinking about, okay, I have cornmeal. Do I want to make turn cornmeal, for instance? All right. And then your different spices to come up with your different spice mixes. When we're looking at curry, like in the French, Caribbean, they have a Colombo and they grind up rice to thicken their curry, for instance, you know? So there's all different ways um, to just, you know, use the metaphor of curry to be able to, depending on where you are in the Caribbean, if you're doing a duck curry, it's gonna be stronger than a regular chicken or a shrimp curry, you know, or curry goat, for example, which is very popular in Jamaica. Once again, like thinking about where different vegetables and different things come from, a lot of our fruits that are in the tropics are from um, Asia, for example, um, or from Africa or from Latin America. So I'll just go through this real fast. Okay. Um, so here is jerk right here, here's like curry, like all different types of curry, because depending on where you're from, your curry blend is gonna be different. Here is a popular Caribbean um, brand called Grace, and they have all different types of spice mixes. A lot of people don't make their own spice mixes anymore. A lot of people buy their own spice mixes. Some people, some of them have MSG, some of them don't, you know, so I just want to share that. Um, you know, I buy some, I mix a whole bunch. I mix like usually, during the holidays, I'll mix them and I'll give them to my sisters-in-laws, you know, um, so they have and my different family members because I like them. Um, but then I also buy them too. And in regard to MSG, a lot of things have MSG. A lot of people say that they're allergic to MSG, but a lot of things have MSG, more things than you know. So I'm not promoting MSG. I'm just saying that a lot of things have it that people don't realize. So here are the the Trinidadian curry brands. And so they have brands that are not necessarily um, culturally appropriate, um, but I did want to include them so people could see them here. I don't know why they have a, a brand called Chief, but um, so making vegetables. Oh, I want to show. One of the things that most Caribbean people do make 
is green tea. So it's using like scallions or cilantro, which is a stronger cilantro and thyme and onions and peppers and different things. And you mix it and then you put it in the back of your fridge and you season up your meat or put it in your soups and stuff like that. So right here is something that usually people do make. And then a lot of people do make their own pepper sauce or their own jerk seasoning too. You know, like putting more vegetables in your food. Here's Jamaican callaloo which is just like a, callaloo is like a spinach. And this is how it's cooked up right here. And then, you know, you have callaloo soup that is eaten in Jamaica too, but more popular in Trinidad and Guyana, which it is more like a okra soup, which is, has that connection to Africa that we talked about two classes ago. You know, just like using, you know, um, okra and tomatoes or um, coleslaw, you know, making sure, you know, roasting your vegetables, all that kind of stuff, stuffing, making kalu patties and vegetable patties, um, stuffing your fish, um, making kebabs and making it mostly vegetables, rice and beans, stew peas. That's a big dish in the Caribbean, stir fries, cook up rice, which is like using whatever leftover stuff that you have in rice, kind of like the Caribbean version of a stir fry, um, you know, ramen, all different types of different dishes that you might like stuffed avocado, stuffed chayote. There's so many different ways in which you can, you know, make vegetables your focus. You have mashes here. So we're talking about like grits and you know, cuckoo and turn cornmeal and um, sweet potatoes. And we eat a lot of tubers and we put them in soup and all that kind of stuff. And we make mashes and um, they're very healthy. Here is um, different drinks. A lot of people might know like coconut water or sorrel, which is hibiscus. Yeah. And it looks like this right here. This is dried. Like where, where are we? <laughs> this is dried hibiscus. So when you're making tea or you're making sorrel or bisap as they call it in Africa or Senegal, it's really good for you. It's um, red zinger tea. Tropical fruits, and then celebration foods. So at our celebrations, we have a lot of meat dishes because that's what we, you know, but on our everyday foods, we have lots of vegetables, you know? And so I, in my family, I bring the vegetable side dishes. So food justice. Yeah, yeah. So you guys have a link um, to the presentation. You can watch the videos the other videos, okay. And pause, stop, share. All right, all right. So now we're gonna cook. Um, yeah, we're gonna cook, yeah. So we're gonna make a curry. So, so like, can you just make sure this is working? For can you see that right there? Yep, Rose? I can see it inside the pot. Okay, all right. So I just wanna make sure that that is working, so. And to everyone who's watching, um, by default, audio is turned off for you. If you'd like to speak, just raise your hand and I can turn audio on for you. Or if you type in the chat, I'll read it off. And anyone right. who's watching on Facebook, if you type in the chat there, I can read that off as well. So here is the eggplant choka. I'm just gonna let it cool and then, Eggplant chocolates, all you do is put a little bit of seasoning in there and you just mix this all around with a fork. I like eggplant skin. Some people don't like it. They feel like it's bitter. So it's really up to you. Other people would um, take off the skin. I'll leave probably most of it on, especially if it's pliable. All right, so I just wanted to show you guys where that was at. I just turned on the stove for the curry. Oh, you, you're, you're trying to make it? Yeah. 
So Tiffany's trying to make naan. Yeah, we're gonna make naan. I make it. I very. But did you find the yogurt? Yeah, yeah. So there's a recipe that I use. That's an Indian naan. This is like more a Trinidadian naan, so it'll be interesting to see. This is just getting hot. So, Tiffany, would you say like every week Caribbean people have curry? Uh, pretty often. I would say that uh, curry was a pretty popular dish, at least in my household, to the point where Tiny got tired of it. Yeah. So like can you pass me different curries that are over here so I can the and the, the ones in the little the package, the bag it, the bags. Yeah. So I'm putting some onions in here. And then a uh, bay leaf soy, please. So especially with a curry, you don't, you 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 don't use. Um, I have two recipes there that I just gave for reference for people, but I'm gonna have to work out like the measurements separately. But I just wanted people to. Um, Be able to see like what we're working with but no Caribbean person uses a recipe for a curry right so here is the one of the Trinidadian brands it's I love um this brand because it's very strong and people some people skimp on the curry I cannot stand if someone your curry is supposed to be thickened by curry and curry can be expensive so people kind of they can skimp on it but I like a curry that is really strong. My daughter just put like two bay leaves in there. You get the um, peppers. The um, get the um, the green ones actually. Yeah, okay. And the carrots. Thank you. I'm just gonna use one. Uh, all right. Huh? Yeah, I taste it a little bit. Mm -hmm. So you want to caramelize your vegetables. And then I'm going to put a little bit of curry in there and then keep on adding and adding. So probably for the curry, I'm going to do um, pumpkin. And so I wish I would have held the pumpkin so you could see it calabaza. And so if you don't have calabaza, which sometimes even if you have it, it can still be a little bit watery, um, is to um, use butternut squash. That's the closest American equivalent. And the butternut squash has the firmness of calabaza and kind of like the after sweetness. So in general, when you do like a stir fry or stew or anything like that, you put the vegetables in that take the longest first. So, you know, your onions, your peppers, that is like your basis of your sauce. So you're coaxing out flavor from that. And then you're just coaxing out flavor from these other vegetables too. And so I'm going to use zucchini, um, the, the, this, yeah. So I'm gonna use zucchini, okra. I'll put those in at the end. Um, said before, I don't like my vegetables well cooked. I am, and this is why I say that I'm Jafakian, um, is that, like a mango or my fruit, I just like it just right. Like a banana, I like it just right. I like green bananas. I like um, green plantains more than ripe plantains. And that's like an anomaly for most Caribbean people. Um, but 
my mango, I like it ripe. I don't like it too ripe. I don't like it mushy. And so I'm an anomaly, you know, like I'm a Jamaican reject and I'm okay with that. But you cook your food the way that you want to and how you like your textures. But I don't like my vegetables overcooked. Thank you. So the broccoli is gonna take the longest. So I'm gonna put that in there and then I'm gonna put my curry in there and I'm gonna use two different types of curry. This is the um, Trinidadian curry and it's duck and goat. So it's really strong because duck and goat are gamey and have, especially goat can have a particular flavor. Yeah, for those meat. So, so, but you can use this curry on anything, but the duck and goat curry is gonna be stronger than curry than you typically put on chicken or fish. All right, so you want it, you want to release the, the um, fragrance from the curry. So if you're using whole spices, if you want to do a whole spice curry, you can do that too. But now when it hits the heat, you smell it and it releases their oils. Yeah, you get a nicer, you get a nicer full of flavor. You always want to watch out with curry too, because curry stains. There's a All question right? in the chat uh, from Maria. What would a what would be a milder curry to look for? Um, so like, can you see? Can you see over? So right here, like an American curry. You know, like I mean, I don't know. Are you in a place that has Caribbean curries or not? She says, I love spices, but not too much heat. Yeah, so like I would just use yellow curry and then like with jerk, for instance, you can still use this jerk, right? And then you just use a little bit and then the flavor in jerk is all spice. So if you want that flavor, but not the heat, then I tell people extend it with some garlic powder, onion powder, a little paprika and all spice and just use a little bit of this. You can still get the flavor and not the heat. The same thing with curry. You know, the things that make a curry hot are a hot pepper. So if you use a yellow curry and you want it to be more fragrant or less spicy, then, you know, you can put some onion powder, curry powder, you know, and put some more fragrant spices in there, you know? Um, so that would be cinnamon or nutmeg or clove, which are still a little spicy, but. All right, so I'm putting um, chickpeas or chana because we're making a, vegeta a vegetarian. And she said, okay, I thanks. I frequently use yellow curry. Oh, you're welcome, yeah. All right, so that is, um, I use the water from the chickpeas. That's gonna help us make our sauce. And now I'm just gonna let that boil up. Here, Soy, please. And what was that white thing you just put in? Oh, it's coconut milk. Okay. Coconut milk. And then um, what else did I want? I wanted um, no, um, yeah. Do you have Soleil? Can you get me some ginger over there? But then there is, oh here, right here. No, I'm not gonna put the puree. Yeah, so I'm not gonna put the puree in there. So this is um, just a little bit of vegetarian bouillon. You can just put, you can put um, regular salt in there if you want to. Or chicken bouillon if you're using, doing a regular, a regular curry. All right, so for ginger, what makes it easier is just taking your spoon and it just takes off just a little bit. 
Oh, do you have one? Yeah, let me have. Great. Um, so I'm just using the microplane. And I'm actually using this, the skin on because with the curry, you're not going to really taste the skin. So you can, you can eat garlic skin, especially if it is um, organic. All right, so Jamaicans, we cook with a lot of allspice, which is also called pimento. And we either break it up or put it in whole. <laughs> People call them reggae balls. All right, so the curry has come together. I'm gonna put the okra in there. I'm gonna taste it. it. Tastes good. So there is enough. Um, can you hear me? Yep. Can you hear me, Rose? Yes. Yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. OK. okay. All right. All right, and so I'm just gonna put the zucchini in because that will take the last, the, the least amount to cook and I'll just turn it off because something cooks longer, like five, 10 minutes longer. So the vegetables are gonna be cooked. So you don't wanna, if you want your, to have like your vegetables still be al dente, then like the zucchini, I just turned it off and you, as you can see, it's still boiling, right? If you want, you want to taste this, Tiffany? And tell me if it needs. So you can make curry with coconut milk or not, because I was making a vegetarian one, and I was like making it more on the ital vein that I was going for the coconut milk, and then so like you should pass me right there, the, yeah. So you have coconut cream also. So this is something that's really good and easy to hold in these times when we're like prepping for who knows what's gonna happen in our world. But yeah, a little goes a long way. You just chop off. I'll show it to you. So Tiffany didn't give me any feedback, but she said it tasted good. And you see that I didn't have to really taste anything because being like, it is something that we have like every week. Like cur curry is something that you have like every single week. It might be curry chicken, it might be curry beef, it might be, you know, curry, you know, like where, where you're making the stuff for roti, you know, like where you have the, the roti skin and you have like the chickpeas and dal, which is like the split peas and then vegetables. So. Most Caribbean households, um, the English Caribbean, you're gonna have curry once a week in some form. So this is the coconut cream. So you just cut a little piece off and you put it in water and then it becomes coconut milk. But then if you want coconut milk that is really creamy because it's really hard to be able to buy coconuts and they're, they spoil. So when you wanna make your own coconut milk, you even wanna make your own coconut milk, I stopped doing it because it's like coconuts are like five dollars and I don't mind paying for them but a lot of times they're dried and they're not there you can't make coconut milk so this is a good alternative for that yeah they dry out so doesn't that look like a really pretty curry yeah that will say one difference mm -hmm. coconut milk coconut milk is not super creamy 
Ooh, but I shit. always drink it. Yeah. Oh, you don't like it? Um, I in my house we wouldn't drink the coconut milk for like a regular everyday drink. That yeah. Happens. Right. Exactly. And I usually tend to do it more when I know that I when something's to be vegetarian because it adds like more luster and it makes you feel like like yeah, like you eating something a little bit more special. You know? So all right, so we can do the stir fry. Stir fry. Yeah. Yeah, we'll try and use it. So it can you take that? Yeah. Um, can you just move? Yeah, like I just. Oh, we've got a comment. It's we can't hear Tiffany too well since she has doesn't right. have the microphone. All right, come over. Yeah. I will speak louder. Do you want it? You want it? here? Why don't you? Why, while I'm setting this up, you can talk. Sure. Okay. Hi everyone. Um. Okay, so again, my name is Tiffany and I'm here helping out Nadine with uh, cooking some of our recipes developed this week for the Caribbean. Um, I guess I just wanted to reiterate some of the things that she was saying and specifically with the uh, uh, how we approach food. That's sort of my uh, particular uh, interest in that, um, you know, it's really important that we just get reintroduced to food as like a normal um, thing and not just like a convenience factor, you know? And that's one thing that I definitely learned uh, growing up in my house, um, you know, what did you have for dinner last night? Like, my answers were rarely anything of the sort with, like, hot dogs or something like that. Like, no, it was always some very full meal. There was always rice. There was always some sort of a stew. There was always, um, you know, just, some, like, literally, like, this type of food here. This is what was constantly in my house. And, um, you know, that was that was just a little different um, compared to, like, what, like, my uh, classmates would have and things like that. So, uh, just doing this week and just really sharing this with everyone is a little is special for me just because, um, you know, you get to highlight, highlight your culture and that's, that's, that's awesome um, that we get to identify with, with it in such a way. Um, and then, yeah, um, I really like that all of these foods are always made from scratch, like literally, like, I don't know how my mother cooked all the time, but she was literally always cooking from scratch, like every single day. So um, this food, it's, it's great. It's amazing. And to be able to introduce it to everyone now is, is awesome. So why do you talk about like the Chinese? You talk about the Indian influence mm -hmm. and like why are we making why are you making stir fry rice? Why is that part of the food? Sure. So I know that there was a big uh migration of Chinese through the Caribbean. Um even it's not even that far off. It's actually currently happening too. There's a lot of Chinese uh influence and whatnot within the Caribbean and it's uh there's actually quite a bit of people who have chinese in their ancestry at this point just again because of how much we mix um and then where the chinese came through they also brought some of their influences like how they cook such um uh, with the technique of the stir fry so i think just using the vegetables and sources that were offered to them with us in 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 the caribbean like the cabbage or or the barley that we were talking about before but you know the rice and just general things like that that's definitely something that was they were able to adapt and then just use quickly um, within the Caribbean or, or a way to transition over into the Caribbean. Um, in terms of like the history specifically, I can't get too much into detail, but I do like a lot of my friends who are Jamaican like have Chinese mixed in them. And it's funny because like what they're going to cook in their house is different from what I will cook in my house. So, you know, like as Nadine mentioned before, like all uh, uh, within Jamaica specifically, I can say, but uh, the Caribbean were touched by different demographics. And I mean, again, just in Jamaica alone, you can tell her house is different from my house, different from people who may have had Chinese in, in, in their influence too. Yeah, oh. so um, so one of, the, one of the dishes that is famous, Jamaica is famous for is like brown stew chicken or brown mm -hmm. stew fish. And mm -hmm. so, you know, like we we're saying about the, I think that Africa's gift to the world is like stewing, mm -hmm. you know? And um, the brown stew fish that you usually use browning. Yep. Very you hear common. Me? Because, okay, so you usually use browning, which is, or you can caramelize and do it yourself. So it's like sugar, and you act, you know, that you put it on the heat, you caramelize it, and this is something that you know in your sauces. Like, I would say, like people of color, you know, Jamaican people. Nadine, could you take the microphone? It's a bit hard to hear you. Okay. 
I would say people of color, especially black people, especially black people from the Caribbean, we like color to our food, you know? And so like when you're making a stew, if you don't have the time to add the natural color from caramelization, then you'll put browning in there. But then also if you, another way to do browning is to use, this is oyster sauce or mushroom sauce. All right. And so that is, I'm giving you a hidden secret that I'm not going to necessarily write down. All right. That my cousin makes some of the best brown stew fish ever. And my family comes from the water. So like grew up on really good fish. And I saw one day that she, that's what she used. It's like, you know, she used as a base is her, it's her oyster sauce. And a lot of people might not say that to you, like oyster sauce or soy sauce, but that is used in a lot of um, Jamaican and, you know, Caribbean cooking. And so like, you know, Chinese, like they're in Trinidad and, you know, all, all around the, um, you know, the, the Caribbean and their influence is in our sauces and in our food. And so like one of our special occasion dishes is like my aunt makes chicken wings and I call them Chinese Jamaican chicken wings because they use soy sauce and um, brown sugar and all of that. So obviously a stir fry, you have to have all your stuff ready. Nadine, we've got a question. What is browning made from? Just sugar, just sugar. And you, um, it's like making a caramel, but the savory version. So this is just coleslaw and um, cabbage is really big, especially like in Jamaica and the English Caribbean. It's something that like you probably have like every day um, in some kind of manifestation. Um, a cabbage salad, a stir fry, you know, like my family will put it part of brown stew, um, chicken. Um, yeah, like you put it, you know, you have like, um, yeah, bully beef, which is corned beef in the can and cabbage, you'll have it um, with saltfish. Um, a lot of people who are vegan, they'll have cabbage instead of um, saltfish, they'll have it with just other vegetables, but it's like a staple vegetable in the Caribbean. I think that it's staple because you can have a cabbage and put it in a cool place and it lasts for a long time. But um, what I love about cabbage is also it's just, it's you know anti carcinogen so it's really good for you health wise. It's a fried rice, the rice. So I'm just putting in the vegetables in order of them being cooked. I mean, Soleil, there's some peas. Can you get me the peas in the freezer, please? Did I put? Did I put um, green beans in our curry or no? no. I didn't, it's all right. These are green um, peas. We've got another question. Are there fermented foods in Caribbean cuisines? Are there fermented foods? Yes. Yes. So, you have ginger beer. <laughs> you have um, those type of things. You have um, like. Aren't there some a good use of vinegar for like pickling? Yeah, There's, yeah. Uh, uh, like excavates is really popular, um, where you you cook the fish like with vinegar, or you can cook it with the vinegar on top, or you can take the, the cabbage and, and carrots that'll, that'll be served with it and, and douse it in vinegar and then put it over with the pimento and the onions. You can put it over the fish like that. Like, and then yeah. we save it, we we preserve it in vinegar in the fridge. Yeah, so like I have a whole can actually in my fridge now. It's probably really spicy, so there's been a lot of spicy peppers in there, but that is okay. Uh, Tiffany, could you take the microphone and repeat that? Can't hear you yeah. too well. 
So what I was describing was something that we have called Escovich fish. Um, it's actually something that's pretty global. Like you might know it as Escoviche, something like that. Um, but Escovich fish is a fried fish where uh, we would use um, at the end, it's, it's finished with vinegar. So what we would do is we would have the vinegar on the pot with onions, pimento, um, and then uh, ca the carrots and the cabbage. And then you'll cook them all together and then you'll douse the fish in it and, and let it sit and seep into it. Um, but then that same cabbage, carrots, vinegar, pimento mixture, you can also save it in the fridge and then take it as like a side to like a side to your plate. So like if you have like a little like a little dollop at the end, so you can eat it with like like your curry or something like that to give it a little extra um, a lift. Hi. Hey, how you doing? I'm good. How are you? Okay, I'm good. You gonna eat today? Uh, you gonna hmm. eat today? Yeah. All right. Um, so I just put a little bit of um, soy sauce, and then I found this at the so if you're in Connecticut, the places that you can go to get Caribbean ingredients are across from Edge of the Woods. There is, what is that? Shanghai Market. Shanghai Market. And then also um, a lot of Asian markets, Indian markets here in um, Connecticut. But that has, the Shanghai Market has the most like, the, can you pass me the, um, the there is bami and breadfruit in a bag. In a, it's a frozen bag, yeah. So I love bami. So you're asking about fermented foods. So cassava, there's a, a cassava that is, um, that can sour. And so someone else would be able to talk better about it, but I think it is fermented into this cake. Um, they squeeze out the poisonous water of the cassava and they make it into a cake. And then you soak this and you put it, um, you soak it in milk or water and then you fry it and it's a side dish. And then next week we'll talk about the Spanish Caribbean. They make it into a cracker um, using the same ingredients. And so cassava, they call it yuca. And so this is very hard to get <laughs> in Connecticut in probably New York, it's probably easier, but even in Boston, it can be and I love Nadine, it looks like your audio just suddenly went out. Can't hear you. Can you hear now? Yep. All right. So this is breadfruit and this is frozen. And it seems like it's waterlogged for those people who are Caribbean, but it isn't. You just cut it and then you fry it or you can roast it. And so breadfruit is roasted. And I don't, it doesn't have a picture of what it looks like. Um, when I have time, like what I'm going to be do is make those um, slide shows, like go through and like show like every vegetable and every like, you know, you can't do that in two hours. So you should know like what breadfruit looks like, what cassava, what malanga. There's all these different root vegetables, calabaza. So when you go to the store, you know what it looks like. But breadfruit, is one of those vegetables that um it's a fruit actually but um the UN is trying to have more people grow it because it produces the most fruit of any tree um so it's able you can make it into flour which is really great like I've had companies where I made some like recipes for them for um banana bread and the bread food flour is so soft. It keeps your banana bread for three days. You know, banana bread gets really hard and stale. With the bread food powder, which is also um, gluten-free, it's amazing. And so they want more people to use it because if you're not from the Caribbean or you're not from, it's from um, Tahiti and those places, then you don't know what to be able to do with it. And it is an acquired taste, but it, it is just a different variation of a uh, potato, basically. So you see we have the fried rice. Um, um, because of the fried rice, like what we do in our household, we not have 100% fried rice. We, we do half and half fried rice. So it's a way in which to add more fiber, you know, um, more fiber and um, more gluten-free. So I, obviously, like, you know, 
as I get older, it's like, you know, inflammation and those type of things. And if you're diabetic, if you want to watch out for how much carbs you're, you're ingesting, do it half and half. You don't know difference. You can't tell the difference and it's great. So for those people who try to have to watch their weight or, you know, for diabetic reasons, Nadine, your audio is kind of going in and out. I think you might be oh. recording from like the laptop okay. instead of the microphone. Can you hear now? I can hear you, yes. Okay. So um, I didn't have a chance to be able to buy the barley and then have it cool beforehand because when you're making fried rice, it has to be cool or it gets mushy. Um, but barley is a great thing to be able to eat fried rice and doing that kind of stuff too. All right. So um, Tiffany is going to start setting up for the um, pictures, and then I'm going to make the um, a chopped salad and dressing, and then the eggplant choka in the last ten minutes. And then for the last half an hour, we'll have like we can be able to take some time to show you how to take pictures. I can go over different ingredients because we have a whole bunch that we haven't even shown you. And, um, and please feel free to ask me any questions that you want. As I said, you know, if you want to know about the different parts of the Caribbean, you know, obviously my favorite island is Jamaica. After that, my favorite island is Puerto Rico. I've been to Puerto Rico twice. I know that people feel like it's part of the uh, America, and it is, but it is also part of the Caribbean. We got some of the small bags, please, sir. Um, but I love um, the culture in Puerto Rico. I love that um, the connection to Africa, the people are really nice. Um, I've been to St. Martin, so that's like the Dutch and French Caribbean. Um, they're known for their ribs, their really good ribs. Um, I've been to Anguilla. Um, I've been to St. Bart's. St. Bart's is both the French Caribbean is the French Caribbean, and so they have croquettes and all that kind of stuff, you know. So the French Caribbean, they're known for you know curry, the Colombos, but then also the Creole food. And so Creole food is, you know, when you go to a place like Trinidad and you say like the Indian food and then the Creole food, the Black Creole food, is like onions, peppers, tomatoes, and that's your your kind of base. And I feel like that is like Africa is like kind of gift to the world of like that base of making different types of stews and you kind of go on variations there. Soup culture is really big in the Caribbean. Um, the, you know, soup day says like it's every Saturday. And so if you bring those all those and then bring me a bowl that I can, or all the, the stuff for the vegetables, no, the, the vegetable salad. Thank you, the rainbow salad. Thank you. Um, yeah, a little bit of red onion. And then, oh, some of the. Um, this is a lot. Um, I hope not using mushrooms. Can I have some of the red cabbage? Um, I don't know what I was talking about. <laughs> So we're gonna make a dressing. And um, usually like in the Caribbean, like our salads are very simple. So it's like a, a cucumber and tomato salad, you know, it might be a cabbage salad and it might not even have dressing on it. It'd just be cabbage and carrots. And um, you might just have a little bit of lemon juice um, on there. So like a lot of our side dishes are, can be kind of plain, but, um, I love beets. These are these are raw beets, and we eat those in the Caribbean. So, like, can you pass me the um, the radish, please? So, I'm just making a chopped salad out of what people would have in a Caribbean household. So, they would have probably celery. They would probably have. Um, they would probably have um, cucumber, tomato. Should I have a 
tomato. So I'm just doing a chopped salad based on that because I like to do things based on showing people what they can use with what they already have. So all this stuff is basically going to be chopped the same amount. Could you maybe turn the overhead camera over to where you're working? Thank you. Thank you. So what are the dishes that you know people have eaten from the Caribbean? Does anyone say anything? Oh. Nope, no one's saying anything yet. All right. All right, so like you just passed me the lemon juice and um, there's some garlic. Do you have garlic over there, Sue? Oh, someone said uh, Jamaican fish tea. Oh, yeah, that's one of my favorites. So you're talking about um, um, so fish tea is fish that you call it what left. You look at you use the what left fish or the fish that you can't fry or cook. And so it's usually small fish. Um, and then you use the whole body of the fish, the caucus, fish head, um, fish tail, um, to be able to make soup. And it usually has like green banana, maybe a little bit of pumpkin, onion. It's very light broth. And it's like people drink it for like usually after work or if you have a hangover or it's just very light and um, very tasty and um, kind of peppery, the, the base. One of my other favorite soups is um, in Trinidad, when you go to carnival, it's carnival time. And what's great about Trinidad is that they have all these, um, my friend Lamine is gonna be on later on today, uh, cookbook author, and um, she's Trinidadian and she has a lot of cookbooks about Trinidad, but she wrote an article and I'll, I'll try and put it on that, um, on remember to put it on my notes. But she wrote an article about carnival and all the food traditions that go with it. And so you go and you, it's called fetting and liming. And you usually have your, you go with a band and you dance with them. But then around the oval, which is like the, would be the green here or your center, you have people who, who sell um, corn soup. And corn soup is delicious. They can have meat in there, but. It can just be corn and pumpkin and all these seasonings. And when you've been up all night partying, it's something that is so comforting. Also in Trinidad, they eat roti. And the roti is like a different type of skin that looks like a burrito and you stuff it with the chana, which is chickpeas and um, potatoes and dal and meat. And you might have pumpkin. Bodhi is, is, um, is green beans in there. So it's like really delicious. And in the morning you might have um, doubles, which is like another kind of um, flat kind of bread that you stuff with um, split peas and different vegetables. So green bean is great for eating. Uh, speaking of peas, something that we also do on pizza is pea soup. But it's, it's different than what you would consider pea soup here. Like it's like a thicker, you can use the ham bone from like Thanksgiving. That's like one of those things that you can do with um, pea soup. But like it doesn't come out green. Oh, and we use different peas too. Because as we were talking about with Africa, like, you know, there's so many different peas that come. There's so many things that we uh, were able to bring over from Africa. Like that's also something that I would say is a big deal in some of the soup that we have in Jamaica um, and then even with rice because there's also rice and beans that's a pretty big deal there too with all the different peas um, like uh, bingo peas uh, as I know but I think it's called pigeon peas here 
uh, red kidney beans are something very popular too. And then you'll often find these in the different soups that we were just talking about. All right, so I'm gonna try and build this salad up to look nice and be like kind of like a composed salad. I'm just doing it on the fly. So I always feel okay, I have some, a little bit of carrot. Um, the more color your food is, colorful your food is, the more you want to be able to eat it. I like a lot of my food to be monochromatic too. People can ask some questions, huh? Yeah. Okay. Nadine, it's hard to hear you again. I think the microphone isn't working, and we're just hearing from the the microphone on the uh, laptop. Can you hear me now? I can hear you, but I still think the microphone that you've got clipped on you isn't working correctly. Just the microphone on the laptop, the, like the built-in one. It's not working. So. Mm -hmm. Can you hear me? I can hear Nadine. If Soleil was saying something, I couldn't. Okay. I think I would have liked a white plate better and a flat one, but we'll play with it afterwards. Because mm -hmm. it kind of gets lost, everything is kind of lost. But, um, yeah. um, so let me, right down there, right underneath there, mason jars. So, Um, I'll do it in a second. Do you have a garlic? Okay. Can you give me some honey, please, sir? Lemon juice. This is honey. It's from a garden that I work with in Harlem. A little bit of salt. Pass me um, the mustard soy. Please. I'm just gonna grate a little bit of ginger. So I'm just doing my dressing on the fly for you to see, because I make my homemade dressings. It's just like whatever I have. And I think that in one of the packets, I'll try and put on this one again. I put on there how to make a dressing and the formula, because there's all different ways in which you make a dressing. A dressing is an acid, oil, you have some things that can emulsify or thicken your dressing especially if you put it in a food processor or a blender, but 
This is real easy. Take it. If you want it more emulsified, then you just put it in the blender or the food processor. Let me taste it. Get this balance. A little bit more. You want to taste this? Some more, some more oil. Yeah, I'm gonna take out that. Yeah. So I don't do usually a regular mix of oil to acid because I don't like my salad very oily and take out the calories. But I knew that my ratio was a little off. Do you need any more salt or no? I don't need some pepper. Okay. If I also want to emulsify it and cut down on the calories, I could also put this in the food processor with some herbs. I like a lot of herbs. I like my food to be herb herbaceous. So like um, parsley, mint, basil, those are all great things, all right? So here's the salad. I'm gonna try and make another salad. It looks a little prettier. Let's add that other. Yeah. Should I do that right now so people can see it? Yeah. Be able to turn it off on the internet. Yeah. Well, I think you're gonna have. To. I think you're gonna have to. Wait. Oh my god. Hilarious. No. I feel like I didn't really conceive this very well. I know. Salads are good anyway, however they I know, but I won't look pretty at all. Mm -hmm. I'm going with the rainbow theme. <laughs> huh? No. I'm gonna play with this even when you guys are when we're finished. That certainly is colorful. It is, but it's not like right. okay. so you guys your spoon, please. And you know what? I don't I have like molds and I didn't bring them to that trip. For the rice. All right, can I get the choker? Mm -hmm. Oh, I just need it. I'm just gonna do it in here. And then I don't know if you wanna um your if you want me to cook your naan for you if you wanna blow it out and then, and then do you want this over? So this is just the choker and Like, can you guys be a masher or whatever? Like?
So as I said, I like to sit on eggplant. I don't feel like it's too bitter. I don't mind it. So it's really up to you. Pass me some olive oil soy, please. And um, is there any time? There's dry time. So time is really big. This is dried. When you have dry time, when you have fresh time, you can dry it. It'll last longer. Gives a different taste. And then a little bit of salt. If you want to, you can put um, some cilantro, some garlic. I'm gonna put garlic powder because I forgot to put cloves of garlic in when I was um, roasting it. That's where you have the improvisation, right? And so you just have this on non, or as I say, like a cassava bread. They have these things called baked. They make it with coconut, regular flour, um, it's kind of like a dumpling or a bread kind of thing. And in the Caribbean, they have like bacon, salt fish, bacon, shark. And then depending on where you go and what neighborhood you're in, if it's like a, a like 40, 50 or 60% Indian neighborhood, um, they'll, they'll, have, they'll have different sodas and chutneys and um they're really good and so i like to go to the places that have those neighborhoods because you'll have all the little condiments that you'll be able to put on your 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 roti or other things like when you're in port of spain you might only have like three of them but when you go out of port of spain you go into the um you know like what people call old-fashioned you know like where country neighborhoods then you'll have like 10 different condiments that you're able that people made by hand and, and they're delicious. So that is it right there. Let's see how that tastes. I think it probably needs some little hot pepper. So this needs a little bit more salt. <laughs> I'm only using a little bit, so a, a little bit at a time. So yeah, needs a little bit more garlic and then a little bit of pepper just to hit it off. And was there any pepper? No, but yeah, was there pepper? So a little bit of habanero or scotch bonnet. All right, so while, how much time do we have? We have 15 minutes. So while um, Tiffany is, is kneading out some of the dough, I'm going to show you some of these other things. Can you hear me those as I'm going, moving? Yes, I can hear you. Right. So here is one of my favorites, Blue Mountain jerk seasoning. It doesn't have any salt in there. So for those people who if you're looking to make sure that you keep your um, pressure down, and a lot of these seasonings have a lot of salt, then this is one that's really good. And it, it's dry and it doesn't also doesn't have, um, it's not really hot, it has more flavor than anything else. So 
and it's red spice, hot pepper, paprika, ginger, turmeric, thyme, salt, garlic, and onion. And then they have spices, like so allspice, cinnamon, nutmeg, depends on whatever version, but this is very flavorful. And so like to making soups, someone's saying about the fish tea, like you put that in there. It's really good. When you're making rice and peas, you can add it in there. But it has all the flavors that would be in a typical Caribbean in making pantry. We have a question. Oh, no. Is the scotch bonnet pepper the same as the habanero pepper? Yes. So, um, so habanero is just the Spanish version, you know, Spanish name for it. So anato or achote. Um, uh, there's a question. Want... Can we see the label of the one she just mentioned, uh, the one that was mild? Blue Mountain. So Blue Mountain Country. They also have a really good jerk. I'm um, not, not, um, they have a really good, um, well, coffee. Well, Blue Mountain Coffee is the best coffee in the world in Jamaica. So it's the most expensive coffee in the world. Um, the land in Jamaica, the earth in Jamaica makes for some really good ginger, um, coffee, bauxite, has really good land. So, yes, Blue Mountain. You can get it at regular, most regular, if you live around Caribbean people, then you should be able to get it. If not, you can go online and you can find it. So I was saying about the chote, it's like we'll talk about more about this next week because they use it in the Spanish Caribbean a lot, but we also use it in um, other parts of the Caribbean too. And so this is what gives things yellow, like your cheddar cheese. It's a natural product, but it adds color more than it adds flavor to something. Stays on spice blends, just showing you different spice blends. You have Jamaican hot pepper. You have the Scotch bonnet pepper right here. Showed you the chief brand. What was that? Your audio cut out for a sec. Oh, yeah. salty cod. Okay. So this is what it looks like. Right? Mm -hmm. And so you would soak this for a day or two, depending on how hard and dry it is. Because if you start, if I wanted to cook it right now, it would be too salty. And so it might boil it out, but it'd be really too salty. So you soak it. Some people soak it in milk. Um, then you boil it, and then you cook it up with onions, peppers, tomatoes, and a Creole sauce. And then you might have it with cabbage or callaloo. Some people have it in butter beans. All over the Caribbean, they cook, you know, salt fish with different things. Some people cook salt fish with eggplant. I don't know, those are like, you know, with okra. Those are like old fashioned recipes. I don't know if the young people have had those things, but the, those are some other ways in which people, yeah, salt fish and gungo peas, which is like pigeon peas. So, um, you know, with the eggplant, there's another thing called sasumba, which is, um, uh, cousin to eggplant and kind of bitter. So yeah, um, here it is a uh, root vegetable, one of our tubers. And we have all different types of yams and things like this. So is there any questions? Oh, here's plantain, here's a green plantain. Mm -hmm. So you either, you know, mash this up. Next week we'll talk about um, mango, which is they eat in the Spanish Caribbean and um, other parts, you know, like mofongo. Yeah, we'll talk about that next week. But um, usually, you know, we might have this in soup, but we usually have it fried. Um, and you have to double fry it, the green plant. Right. So, all right, let's go over here. Tiffany has- 10 minutes left. Yep. Anon. Mm -hmm. 
right? And then we're gonna start taking some pictures, right? So I brought today like a white tablecloth because in the Caribbean, a lot of times our grandparents, they made these things. They made the lace work. Mm -hmm. There's another question. Did Nadine already explain the difference between this non and the other non? This what and what? This non and the other oh. non. Oh, this non is homemade and the other is not. Okay. So that's all you want to. I didn't know if we could have enough time for the homemade, so. I want to try. Not as um, easy. I'll give you the recipe, like the uh, other oh, nons. So you said you mentioned there was like Indian naan and some other type of naan. So what's the difference between? Oh, them? like I mean, oh, uh, what, the spices and um, uh, could you get close to the microphone, please? The the main difference between these are um, in my um, it, overall, like with the roti that um, that Nadine was mentioning earlier, bus up shit is also something it's called. Like it's a finesse uh, version of naan or there's, the rasa. It's also called. Like there's a lot of variations. There's, there's, a, di there's a lot of different types of roti, you mm -hmm. guys. Okay, so I know you want all of it all at one time, but it's like just in Trinidad and alone. There could be like five different types mm -hmm. of rotis. You know, like so bus up shop that she's talking about is bus up. It's like the that's the easiest um roti to make that's one that i make because it, it looks like it's busted up that's like that's what the name comes from so it's like it looks crazy so i'm not really good with dough so i don't make dumplings for other people i'll make them for myself but i'm not going to serve them to my family because they'll laugh at me mm -hmm. you know so bust up shop is dough that it looks like layers of you know and then also like pieces of dough that have been spread apart and like kind of fried and that you take a piece of dough and you put it in your curry and you eat it like that, you know? Um, but follow up question, all, uh, different flowers, different just curious. Hmm? Uh, there's a follow up question, different flowers, just curious. Yeah, there's, so there's different flowers. So they, like there's, yeah, there's chickpea flower. So best flower, which is called chickpea flower. You know, you can use, um, you know, um, um, wheat flour, white flour, um, and probably, you know, like when you're looking at old fashioned, you know, like I don't mean to say like old fashioned, but it's like people who, who like a lot of recipes that we're talking about, young people, because it takes time to prepare, that a lot of people might not know how to be able to make these things. And so, um that's why we do pan african kitchen lab yeah to exactly show you all the different variations and that's really simple you probably have a lot of these recipes ingredients in your home already you probably already have a lot of these ingredients in your home and like just becoming more familiar with food in and of itself and knowing how to prepare it and the variations of the same thing will be very helpful so that you know you can make more things and a lot of these things that we're talking about also are made in the home they're not made a lot of people you know like we don't want to talk about um, our connection to food, but a lot of like our connection to soul food, our connection to Jamaican food is like what we buy at a shop. What we buy at a shop is not what you eat at your home on a regular basis. And so you might be hard pressed to be able to get steamed fish from someone unless you know them. But most people in Jamaica are eating steamed fish. You're not eating fried fish. You buy, you go out and you buy fried fish because most people don't want to fry it in their house. You know, because uh, yeah, because the odor. But what you make in your own house is like fish tea or steamed fish with okra and pumpkin, you know, and crackers. And so, um, a lot of people are disconnected to those things. You know, they might know a curry, but they might not know how to do a rundown, for instance, you know, or a oil down. And so, we're just trying to make people understand that and also understand the more helpful ways of preparing Caribbean food, which for some people might take a little bit longer, but other things don't, you know, you'd be able to take a chopped salad and make a salad dressing and stuff that you have from your house and make it taste good. Anyone else have any questions? 
get me on cookies for some Christmas. I think the harvest is really good. Never, never, never keep away from a good char. Like a, a good char adds a great flavor, especially with jerk. Oh, just it's just true. It's true. <laughs> oh no. Well, oh, thank you. Can you hear me, Rose? Yep, I can hear you. All right. Thank you. Um, hope to see you guys next week for our final class. Um, it's been a pleasure. If you have any questions, no one has emailed me, so I guess you don't have any questions. But if you have any questions, you know, you can always email me. Um, I will try and put the things that I said, add to my notes. So you don't have to send out a separate um, email. Rose, I'll just add to my notes um, later on today or tomorrow. You can check in. And um, yeah, see you next week. So we'll end with Afro-Latino cuisine. It is a very big region and lots of people. So look forward to seeing you. Have a great weekend. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Nadine and Tiffany. And thank you, everyone, for coming. Bye. Bye.